All right, guys, question of the day today. Should I sue George Floyd's family? Kind of thinking that it should for emotional distress. Plus, later on, we'll be talking about the BBC because they've apparently prepared secret scripts that could be read on air if energy shortages cause blackouts or the loss of gas supplies this winter. Hmm. All that and more today on Candace Owens. So The Greatest Lie Ever Sold, that is the title of my smash hit documentary. It's all anybody seems to be talking about these days online. If you haven't seen it, make sure you go so that you understand why it's causing such a headache for so many people. People are angry. How dare we? They had decided on the narrative already. Remember, George Floyd is a hero. Derek Chauvin is a monster. How dare anybody have the audacity to go backward and to reexamine what happened in this country during the riots, during the looting. Now, personally, I think that I deserve an Emmy Award. I don't know, something, a Pulitzer, a Nickelodeon Award, anything. I don't know if it's going to happen because I'm recognizing that instead, what the media is trying to do is to double and to triple down on their lies. So my friend Ye, you know, the artist formerly known as Kanye West, went on Drink Champs. This is a podcast. The funny thing is I was supposed to go with him but I couldn't because um, my young son got sick that morning. And so I did not go down there. And what has happened is he began, to, because EA went and spoke about the documentary, he spoke openly, basically was giving a critique of a documentary, a positive one, a review, if you will. And he told the truth about the levels of fentanyl that were found in George Floyd's autopsy. He told the truth because he watched the documentary he told the truth because he was at the premiere. And like many people who have seen the documentary, he is upset with how we were lied to, how Black America in particular was lied to. So because of this, Roxy Washington, that is the mother of George Floyd's daughter, so George Floyd's baby mama, she has retained the services of a law firm in preparation to file a $250 million lawsuit against Ye for the comments that he made about George Floyd's death. Wow, that is incredible. Imagine going on air and telling everybody about a documentary that you watched, a documentary that is completely factual, a documentary that had experts, a documentary that used excerpts from the trial itself, and you decide that your grift just must keep on grifting. Oh my gosh, I am not, no, 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 I'm just gonna file a lawsuit against Ye. In case you didn't know this, guys, Ye has already given that family $2 million. Yes, because perhaps he even believed that it was a racist event, that Derek Chauvin did this because he hated black men, and now some clarity has been provided. And he is trying to extend that clarity on a podcast to people who maybe have not seen the documentary yet. So let's first take a listen to Ye's actual statements that he made on Drink Champs. I watched the George Floyd documentary that Candace Owens put up. One of the things that his two roommates said was, they want a tall guy like me. They want a tall guy like me. And the day when he died, he said a prayer for, you know, eight minutes. Mm -hmm. He said a prayer for eight minutes. They hit him with the fentanyl. If you look, the, the guy's knee wasn't even on his neck like that. When he said, mama, mama his, is his girlfriend. They said he screamed for his mama. Mama was his girlfriend. It's in the documentary. So I would like to first again impress upon you that Ye has already given this family $2 million. What did they do with that $2 million and the other millions and millions of dollars that came flooding in for them? Uh, nobody knows. I know what they didn't do for documentary shows. They didn't uh go to George Floyd's house and pick up his stuff. They allowed his car to rot in the driveway. They didn't go visit the roommates or his the last place that he lived for the five years preceding his death. They didn't care about any of that. They did get in front of cameras and cry. They did get in front of cameras and talk about, oh, how much they loved him. The roommates, which is in a clip that we actually didn't air, uh, told us that they had never even seen any of these family members. They'd never seen anybody that they saw on air talking about how much they loved him. 
it was the roommates that actually spent the most time with him for the last five years of his life. So it was interesting. It's an interesting, it's a compelling story. How, um, how honest are they being in their expression of their emotions, of how close they were and how much they loved George Floyd himself? I don't know. We left that up to interpretation after the documentary. But here's what we know and what we stand by. We stand by the truth regarding the levels of fentanyl that were in George Floyd's body. And we're going to give you a clip, an excerpt from the documentary itself. Take a listen. They had to have the jury believe that it was a neck restraint, it was the knee on the neck, it was asphyxiation that killed George Floyd. However, there was a ton of evidence that George Floyd consumed a toxic, lethal cocktail of fentanyl and methamphetamine. Uh, uh, I ate too many drugs. Did it appear that Mr. Floyd said, I ate too many drugs? Yes, it did. Let's put it in perspective. Three grains of fentanyl on the head of a lead pencil, enough to kill you, enough to kill me. And so they had to continuously inculcate the public to believe that Derek Chauvin intentionally, premeditatedly murdered George Floyd and drugs had absolutely nothing to do with it. As, as Lindsay and the toxicologist presented that awful testimony. Do you recall describing the level of fentanyl as a fatal level of fentanyl? I recall describing it in other circumstances. It would be a fatal level, yes, in other circumstances. Had Mr. Floyd been home alone in his locked residence with no evidence of trauma, and the only autopsy finding was that fentanyl level, then yes, I would certify his death as due to fentanyl toxicity. I know I can't breathe! I can't breathe! I can't breathe! I can't breathe. I can't so our documentary also shows that George Floyd said, I can't breathe before he was ever put onto the ground. It also shows that he himself asked to be put on the ground. So essentially everything that we were sold, the greatest lie ever sold via the media, was a lie, right? We were led to believe that he was placed on the ground and unnecessarily restrained against his will. Why couldn't this have just been a peaceful arrest? Well, the answer to that is because he resisted arrest. He kept resisting arrest. They kept asking him what was wrong with him. He didn't mention to them that he was actually sitting in the car when they arrived with his drug dealer. We also go to show you that there, were chewed, there was a chewed up pill that was found in the police cruiser that tested positive for Floyd's DNA, tested positive for fentanyl. So what do you think that George Floyd was doing with his drug dealer sitting in a car when he also dropped a chewed up fentanyl pill? What do you think that George Floyd was doing in that car? I'll leave it up to you. I don't know if we're all gonna pretend to be stupid. Let's, let's just leave it to the audience. What, what was he possibly doing? Just having a conversation with this drug dealer who refused to testify because he wanted to recuse himself because he had other pending charges that might implicate him? I think they were just hanging out, talking about the game. It is such an insult, a continued insult to the public's intelligence that we have dropped an actual factual documentary to reveal the truth. And in response to us telling the truth, they've decided to triple down on the lie. The media is behind this without question. The media is behind trying to make people believe that there's anything actionable in this lawsuit against Ye. In fact, the lawsuit is such crap. I'm going to read you what, what, what it actually says. Ready? It says, this is a demand letter that is written to Kanye West. It says, Mr. West, we are contacting you regarding your recent statements in reference to George Floyd and his manner of death. Our office represents Mr. Floyd's minor child and her mother. As you can expect, our clients are very distressed and hurt by the allegations that you made. Mr. Floyd's cause of death is well settled through evidence presented in courts in the courts of law during the criminal and civil trials that were the, were the result of his untimely and horrific death. Okay, um, we presented evidence from the trial. 
the evidence from a trial that never made it to the mainstream media. So it's completely ridiculous that you're pretending that this documentary doesn't have two legs to stand on. Uh, what you're actually upset on is that you are understanding that you are losing control of the narrative, as you should lose control of the narrative. Because as we also revealed, the $80 million that was raised on the back of the public believing that George Floyd was ruthlessly murdered by a police officer and this lie was orchestrated by intentionally extracting meaningful portions of the trial. Yeah, none of that money actually went to help Black America itself, did not go to the inner city communities. They are completely rotten today, right? We showed the increase in criminality and the increase in murder in the city of Minneapolis itself. So what they're doing is they are once again, and they are standing behind George Floyd's minor child to do this, they are once again trying to get ahead of the public demanding answers, right? The public should demand answers. A lot of money was stolen on the back of the slide. It is theft to take money, to report that you are doing it to further black lives and to do no such thing as what was done with Black Lives Matter. Now, the second portion of this, obviously, which they're upset about is the fact that Kanye said that he wasn't even on his neck like that. All right, let's take another listen to my documentary. From the perspective of Miss Frazier's camera, it appears that Officer Chauvin's knee is on the neck of Mr. Floyd. Yes. Would you agree that from the perspective of Officer King's body camera, it appears that Officer Chauvin's knee was more on Mr. Floyd's shoulder blade? Um, yes. Yes, that is the chief of the Minneapolis Police Department saying that from the video he was watching, as he is sitting in trial, he realizes that from the police body cam footage, it looks that it looks as though Derek Chauvin is actually kneeling on his back shoulder blade. And the footage from Darnella F Frazier's cell phone showed from the front, not from the back. So that's important. Kanye told the truth. He told you what he saw in the documentary. He's essentially providing you a review. And yet, despite this, this demand letter went out and is asking that Ye refrain from publishing or causing to be published any other audio, video statement, any posts regarding George Floyd, his estate, his family, and the circumstances surrounding his death, including but not limited to his manner of death. So the demand is that Ye shuts up about the documentary. Shut up. We don't even care whether or not it's true. You need to shut up. You are not allowed to publish anything about this documentary. Well, guys, let me tell you something. Ye is not going to shut up. I spoke to him last night. He's not going to shut up. I'm not going to shut up. I'm certainly not going to shut up. This is the greatest lie ever sold. You're asking Black America to remain stupid. You're asking Black America to remain convinced that all we are are victims of circumstances and that we play no role in those circumstances whatsoever. It takes three nanograms of fentanyl on the tip of a pencil to kill a human being, and George Floyd had 11 nanograms in his system at the time of death. And you want Black America to believe that it's just completely irrelevant. It's completely irrelevant. It's not irrelevant. That's always what you're asking Black America to be, emotional and irrational. And I'm sick of it. I'm also sick of frivolous lawsuits. You know, if this is actually considered credible, if you can sue somebody because you're feeling emotionally distressed, because of them going out and saying things, well, then I think that I have grounds to sue George Floyd's estate. I have grounds to sue George Floyd's family for doing this little PR stunt. It's causing me a ton of distress. I feel angry and I feel upset with the fact that I am fighting for Black America to be freed from the lies while these people are fighting to keep them in the dark. This is unacceptable. I'm really, I'm serious. I'm going, I'm going to go out and I'm going to ask lawyers, if this is legitimate, can I sue George Floyd's family? Because I should be able to. In fact, we should be able to sue Black Lives Matter. We should be able to sue the media that is clearly colluding with George Floyd's family so that they can bury the evidence. Nobody is going to shut up. And I will fight tooth and nail for people to see the truth. And that's all I have to say about that. Okay, guys, so in the spirit of Halloween season, I have something really scary to tell you about, and that's meat recalls. In case you didn't know, there is so much uncertainty that comes with buying meat at the grocery store. Recently, 44 tons of meat products were recalled from retailers in Illinois, Kentucky, and Missouri for listeria. 
plus most grocery store meat comes from dairy cattle, which is incredibly low quality. For all of these reasons, I buy my meat from Good Ranchers. It's 100% American meat delivered right to your door, and it's all grass-fed and grain-finished without any added hormones or antibiotics. Unlike the grocery store, Good Ranchers has never had to do a recall, and they have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. And unlike buying from grocery stores, you always know where your meat is coming from. Right now, Good Ranchers is throwing in a huge October feast where you can get over four pounds of free meat when you go to goodranchers.com slash Candice and use code Candice at checkout. That's two pounds of Wagyu ground beef and two and a half pounds of chicken free with any purchase of a bundle box. Go to goodranchers.com slash Candice and use code Candice at checkout. That's goodranchers.com slash Candice and use code Candice at checkout to claim your special October feast offer. Okay, now it's time for some topics du jour. I think one of the things that's really strange that I've learned from my husband about how things operate overseas is that the people are taxed to support the BBC. The BBC is their you know, public broadcasting network. I, mean, I find them to be the equivalent of CNN in America. And it would be very weird if we were taxed to keep CNN um, in service. It's just very weird to me, right? And what's interesting is that it also makes it very obvious that the BBC is just the propaganda arm for the government. Of course, they can't say anything critical of the government because the government is what is allowing them to function, not the free markets, right? Anyways, this is super interesting. The BBC has prepared secret scripts that could be read on air if energy shortages cause blackouts or the loss of gas supplies this winter. In case you missed it, uh, Europe is facing an energy crisis. We're going to talk more about that tomorrow. But the scripts, which have been seen by The Guardian, set out how the corporation would reassure the public in the event that a major loss of power causes mobile phone networks, internet access, banking systems, or traffic lights to fail across England, Wales, and Scotland. The public would be advised to use car radios or battery-powered receivers to listen to emergency broadcasts on FM and long-wave frequencies usually reserved for Radio 2 and Radio 4. One draft of their script warns that a blackout could last for up to two days, with hospitals and police placed under extreme pressure. Another script says the government has said it hopes power will be restored in the next 36 to 48 hours. Different parts of Britain will start to receive intermittent supplies before then. Yeah, guys, how's that Green New Deal working out? Uh, How's that we are no longer independent when it comes to energy, which is what every single nation should aspire to? You should not rely on others to turn your lights on. But of course, I don't know, in the West, we just have this idea that, oh, no, it's, it's good that we should not be, you know, drilling. Fossil fuels are bad. Let's march against fossil fuels. Let's march against drilling. Let's march against the pipelines. Doesn't it feel good, kumbaya? Oh, but we actually um, need uh, to operate our cars and our vehicles. Oh, we need electricity for our electric, uh, our electric cars. Where are we going to get this energy from? Oh, I know. Let's just get it from other countries. As long as we feel good. Even if we're not doing good and we feel good, let's do it. That's honestly what all of the Green New Deal perspectives have been about. And of course, what it's leading to is more government power. And it sounds like Europe, and I shouldn't laugh because it's sad, but it sounds like Europe, especially with the Nord Stream pipeline having been recently attacked and not being able to sufficiently get the oil and gas that they need from Russia, they're going to be facing a crisis this winter. And their government is now preparing the propaganda that will go out probably going to say, we're all in this together. I know that we, the government, have the lights on and we are obviously going to make sure that we have the energy first and that we are probably still flying around private. But the messaging that needs to go down to the little people is that we're all in this together. So go out and get some wood and start a fire because they know what is happening, and they know that it is not the government that will solve this, although it is the government that caused these issues. Moving on, here is, this is very weird, and I promise you it's real. When I was shown it, I thought it was a joke. I thought it was a Saturday Night Live unfunny spoof, maybe. I thought maybe it was a Babylon Bee headline. It's not. Rep Eric Swalwell of California, you know him, he sucks, 
He released a campaign video that forecasts the future for families in states where abortion is outlawed. So this is supposed to be a futuristic video. This is what's going to happen if we outlaw abortion. The video for the former prosecutor is entitled Lock Her Up, and it opens with a family that is sitting around a dinner table when suddenly two police officers knock on the door and announce that they are going to be arresting the mother for unlawfully terminating a pregnancy. Take a listen. Mary Anderson? Yes? I have a warrant for your arrest. Arrest for what? Penal Code 243 violation. Unlawful termination of a pregnancy. You gotta be kidding me. That, that is my personal business. That's for the courts to decide, ma'am. Your medical records have been subpoenaed and Dr. Landry's already in custody. No, my, my God, you, you, you can't just- You will have to submit to a physical examination. What? By who? No, no, no one's touching her. Oh, sir, get that. Man, turn around. Oh my God. Put oh your my hands God. behind your back. Now. Why is this happening? Love you, honey bear. We're just enforcing the law here. Elections have consequences. <laughs> Vote Democrat on November 8th. Stop Republicans from criminalizing abortion everywhere protect women's rights and freedom. Mm -hmm. Please, don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> they are correct. Elections have consequences. In California, you elected an idiot. His name is Eric Swalwell. And he actually thought that this was a good video. This is actually premiering. I mean, could you imagine watching this on TV and, and not, and actually thinking that it's a joke and it's real? Like he thinks this is going to rally the troops behind him. Oh my God, it's so true. If I don't vote for Eric Swalwell, then obviously the police are going to be knocking on my door and they're going to pull out their guns while there's a baby sitting in a high chair. I mean, it's just, it's just stupid. I mean, this is it. This is all they've got. It's just this never-ending fear campaign to try to push and force through their policies. I mean, first and foremost, the great irony, by the way, is that there is no state that gives, your, give, gives parents less control over their children than California, right? If you're going to talk about the dystopian nightmare that is California, I remember when I was doing my series, um, A Shot in the Dark, which I released on Parlor, talking about why I chose not to vaccinate my children. Neither of my children are vaccinated. I'm very proud and open about that. I don't mind if you do something different, but this is how I live my life. And I uh, remember all of the moms who were writing to me from California were saying, okay, but we literally don't have the option to choose that in California. California will send around uh, the DCS if you do not get the vaccines as mandated by the state. Uh, so, so you don't even have parents in that state. If you're going to have people knocking on the door, it's probably going to be the government because you're making decisions about the health of your children. It's not going to be the government because you got an abortion and they're going to whip uh, pistols out on you and tell you that you're under arrest while you're eating dinner with your family. Again, this is all just fear mongering and it's all the left has. It's all they have left. It's how they are able to assert control. And if there's any person that is watching that going, yeah, that's why I, ha why I have to vote. Um, then you represent a very real argument of why there should be a basic IQ test before you're allowed to vote. Up next, because Democrats don't even realize what they're saying half the time, this is also hilarious. Stacey Abrams joined Morning Joe on MSNBC, and she said that more abortions could help solve the inflation problem. I wish I was kidding. I'm not. Take a listen. Having children is why you're worried about your price for gas. It's why you're concerned about how much food costs. For women, this is not a reductive issue. You can't divorce being forced to carry an unwanted pregnancy from the economic realities of having a child. <laughs> I don't know what to say, guys. You, I know you're concerned about the gas prices. I know you're a little concerned about what's happening at the grocery store and that you're spending $100 for a little slice of steak. But have you ever thought that it's actually your fault? 
because you had children. Actually, the problem is that you're alive. The problem is that you're breathing. It's not that the government totally messed up and their policies have been anti-nationalistic, right? Basically telling us that we should be dependent upon other nations and that Joe Biden should be on his hands and knees begging OPEC to turn on the lights or that Europe should be on their hands and knees begging Russia to turn on the lights. No, that's not the problem. The problem is not your government being stupid. The problem is that you're breathing. Genius. Why didn't I think of it? Why didn't I think of it? Oh, I know, because I'm not a Democrat. And I just could not imagine having the audacity to look people in the faces that are suffering, that are truly suffering, because my goodness, look at the price of gas. My goodness, when I go to the grocery store. In fact, my makeup artist said this morning, I just got stuff to make tacos, literally just to make tacos. I didn't even get the shell at at the grocery store, and it cost her $90. $90 for taco night. Doesn't even make sense. But forget the fact that these people are actually suffering, that all of us are realizing that there is this much inflation. And forget actually saying, I'm sorry, we messed up. We messed up. We should have had better policies. And you know what we're going to do? We are going to stop boycotting against the pipelines, right? We are, we are a nation that could be energy independent, and we're going to take every step to make that happen. Rather than doing that, they are draining our oil reserves and getting their politicians on stage to tell you, stop breathing, essentially. Just stop breathing. Stop creating so many people that breathe. You know, It's basically like saying, stop being poor. That's it. That's the message from a Democrat party. Up next, guys, and speaking of things that are hilarious, there was a girl on TikTok. She says that she went to high school with me, and she dropped a video uh, basically calling me a fraud and a hurt fraud, though, because of what I lived through in high school. This, again, is a reaction. There's been tons of TikTok videos that are being made by individuals because of my George Floyd documentary. It's very problematic to tell the truth. And so now the media is platforming anyone and anything that is against Candace Owens. Let's take a listen to what she had to say. I don't want to be a part of this culture. Um, You can stick around if you want. You can go watch the original video for context. I got something to say to Candace. She's probably never going to see this, but I just want to say my piece. I see it. Hey, Candace. Hey, girl. <laughs> you remember high school? I remember high school. It was it was quite a while ago. It was like 15 years ago. You remember 2007? I remember 2007. I, um, I remember some very horrible things happened to you in 2007. And some very racist white children called you, including the mayor's son. Um, and said some very racist things to you and threatened your life. That should have never happened to you. That was terrible. Um, I remember you sued the school board for that. You did? I remember because everybody was talking about it. My family was talking about it. My grandma was calling up your grandma. Uh, the entire school school system was talking about it. It was a huge deal because oh. the mayor's son was involved. And you had the NAACP backing you up when that happened and they got you your settlement you sh- i think i i think you should have gotten more because i am always ready to let racists pockets bleed but regardless naacp backed you up the black community backed you up wow this is a compelling story it's it's a compelling story that in high school I received some racist messages from some powerful Democrats' sons. Um, It's compelling. And the NAACP helped me get a settlement. And you know what? I have no idea who this person is that made the TikTok video, but I have to be honest. I do remember this story. In fact, I remember it so well, so well, that it's chapter two of my book. (laughs) <laughs> this girl. Of course, journalists never fact check whether or not she went to school with me. Nobody cares, right? It's somebody that is on TikTok where we all go to get our information now, right? Saying that she went to school with me, that her grandma called me. Well, I'm not going to be able to fact check that because my grandmother's been dead since 2013. But this girl remembers this. I have no idea who this human being is. I messaged four people that I went to high school with and said, does anybody recognize this girl? 
from the class of 2007 in Stanford High, and everyone came back and said no, okay? I can tell you definitively, she never was in a class with me in 2007 in Stanford High School. She, at the very least, was not in a class with me all throughout school. And yet she makes videos on TikTok, and it gets millions of views, and people go, oh my gosh, she brought up the NAACP. The NAACP was involved. Oh, what I can confirm is that this girl read my book. Yeah, you're right. The NAACP was involved. They never spoke to me, but they showed up at my school with cameras because they wanted to fundraise off of a girl that had suffered through something that was very real. It's actually the reason that I am conservative. It's the reason why I stand up against these race hustlers like the NAACP, because for me, it's real. They used me, they lied, and they never checked up with me. It was all about getting headlines. And so you are not breaking any stories, but I am glad that unlike the people that shared this video, you actually read. Again, chapter two of my book, Blackout. It's been on sale for the last two years. I suggest everybody else go read it and get up on that story. All right, guys, it is now time to get into some of your comments. I love your comments. I'm always reading them. So here's the first one. So this one's from Noelle, and she is responding to me defending Matt Walsh. I, we have, still don't know why Matt Walsh went viral over anime and him just saying, just feel satanic. But she writes, I'm into anime and I, can, and I can argue against some of those things. Again, indeed, there are some animes that have a lot of demonic things, but there are others that just don't. Every anime has different authors, ideas, and beliefs behind them, so no anime cannot be encapsulated as a whole. It has a lot of variety. I don't think cartoon-style shows are only for kids, actually. The cartoon, the show itself, is one way to deliver a message. Again, there is indeed some satanic and demonic things in some animes. It's not a secret, but it also happens in normal and regular TV shows. So yeah, in conclusion, in this case, the problem is not the delivery, the anime show, or the cartoon-style show. It is the message that it portrays. Noelle, I totally agree. I actually am not into anime at all. I was just being tongue-in-cheek when I defended Matt Walsh because I think he was just being funny and somehow uh, something that he said that was sort of funny uh, got taken very seriously. And here's what I will say. You are correct that irrespective of whether we're talking about cartoons or anime, that there could always be a demonic message delivered. Hello, we have kids today that are learning via cartoons that they can pick their genders. They're learning about being lesbian and being gay via cartoons. We are constantly having to fight uh, for this perversity not to be throughout children's cartoons. And that there's nothing more demonic to me than trying to confuse children and trying to seek authority over them, authority over them, irrespective, irregardless of their parents and the structures that are at home. So I don't disagree with your statement, but don't take me too seriously on weighing in on anime. Next comment is from Nana Bars. She wrote, the political sadism fetish that you speak of reminds me of the 1700 to the 1800s British period dramas that I watch, a time in human history when everyone enjoyed going to the town square to watch someone be hanged or beaten to death. Wow, I love that comment. It is so true, and that is how I have felt. In fact, my producer said something which is very true. If you look over the last two weeks since I put on the White Lives Matter shirt, essentially what's been happening is a waterboarding. It's been a media waterboarding and everyone is attacking me from every single angle, demanding that I do this and demanding that I do that. And the reason is because they want me to suffer, the consequences from putting on that White Lives Matter shirt, but the person that they want to suffer more is Ye, um, because he is a bigger figure than me. He's a globally recognized figure who is standing up to the mob, and so the mob is now demanding his head on a platter, and they want everyone to meet in town square and to watch him be hung, which brings us back to this frivolous lawsuit that has now been launched against him from George Floyd's family. Um, you know, the, the lies are angry at the truth, and the best thing for the truth to do is to remain resilient. Next comment, Satan seems to hate women. It could be that they can create a life and he can't. Envy, which usually comes out as mocking. Hateful, mean-spirited comments and or actions, when in fact it's jealousy. You can apply this to a lot of their other concepts too. They are never going to admit they're jealous and or envious, so it just comes out as hateful. Uh, this is a comment that is in response to me discussing the two 
trans or whatever part of the alphabet letter soup it was, the podcast where they were talking about what it is to be a woman. And you are correct. I do believe that transgenderism is a form of misogyny. Uh, They are hyper-focused on aspects of womanhood that are not real. I don't know a single woman that acts out a caricature who talks like, I'm a guy, I'm a I'm just a man, I'm a I'm a guy, I'm a guy. Like that would be so annoying. It would be so annoying if there was a woman that acted like that because it would seem like theater. It would seem like something that you expected to see when you went to watch a play. It would seem like a stand-up comedic act that is just saying, you know, mocking women, essentially. And the fact that this has been allowed to go on so long and people don't understand why women are upset about it. Women like J.K. Rowling, who have stood up to the mob and said, this is not okay. Being a woman is a real thing. We go through real struggles and allowing a man to put on a wig and pretend that that's it. That's all it took is allowing men to laugh at us, and it needs to stop. Final comment from Shannon Matthews. I buy a lot of beauty products at Ulta. Clearly, we now need an alternative. We have Jeremy's razors. I think it is time for The Daily Wire to launch Candace Beauty. (gasps) I love that. I take that comment as a badge of honor. We do need that, actually. I would love to get into makeup. I'd probably be very difficult to work with because I'm very specific, so I'm not about ever selling to women something that would make their skin break out. I was traumatized by what happened with me with MAC products. In fact, this is a true story. When I first started working here, there was a advertiser that wanted me to like read ads for them. And I went and I used the product and my face broke out and I refused to read the ads because I said it is a sin to promote to women something that is actually going to hurt their skin. And I will not do it. I will never do it. (laughs) It just, I mean, that is, if you want to talk about the greatest lie ever sold, It's MAC Studio Fix Fluid. All right, before we continue, I want to talk to you about ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN is an app that encrypts all of your network data and reroutes it through a network of secure servers so that your private online activity stays private. Have you ever read the fine print that appears when you start browsing in incognito mode? It says that your activity might still be visible to your employer, your school, or your internet service provider. That's not really incognito. Every time you connect to an unencrypted network, cafes, hotels, airports, any hacker on the same network can gain access to your personal data. Hackers can make up to $1,000 selling just your personal information on the dark web. And by the way, it doesn't take much technological knowledge to hack someone. A 12-year-old with access to a cheap hardware could do it. That's why I use ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN creates a secure, encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet so that hackers can't steal your data. It's easy to use and it works on all devices, phones, laptops, tablets, and more. Secure your online data today by visiting expressvpn.com slash Candice. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash Candice. You can get an extra three months free. Expressvpn.com slash Candice. Ladies and gentlemen, that is all that I have to say today. All right, you know that the next portion of the show is going to be available exclusively on Daily Wire Plus. So if you're not yet a member, go ahead and click the link in the description and subscribe right now.